Sly Cooper fans, enjoy this video and keep your eye out for a link at the end of this video to a contest we're doing where you could be the winner of a free PlayStation 5. Since we celebrate the ever so underrated, almost cult classic Sly Cooper franchise in this corner of YouTube, let's look at maybe one of the major key reasons we have such a deep appreciation for the series, both from a story and gameplay perspective. The proper, exciting, and ever so unique evolution of the game's supporting characters, Bentley and Murray. In the original Sly Cooper, you're introduced to these characters as supporting cast for the game's story. Even then, their integral role in the assistance of every level is made known as the importance of teamwork work in calculated heists is clear in the narrative. Count on me to be your eyes and ears, buddy. Got their security system totally scoped. To get inside, you're gonna have to go through that air vent. To get inside that thing, you had to steal all seven of Raleigh's treasure keys. Dial in 314. All you gotta do is grab the file and get back to the van. We'll do the rest. 90% of the time, Sly is the only playable character, but in a way, you as the player don't quite feel so alone in the field because of the consistent interaction with the supporting characters. Naturally, if you have an affection for these kind of stories, the roles of Bentley and Murray are already familiar staples in the theme of thievery, heists, or secret agent stories. Maybe you can pinpoint where you've seen these cliches in film and television, or maybe it's subconscious, but either way, the classic tradition of a thieving team effort between the minimum of three experts is etched into our brains. When I think of Bentley, I almost think of Tom Arnold's character from True Lies. When I think of Murray, I almost think of Ryan Gosling's character in Drive, being that these kinds of characters are key players in a calculated operation versus the arc of a lone thief with a less interesting plan to pull off a successful heist. Three brains are better than one, and teamwork is essential when the risk could be your life or your freedom. In the first Sly Cooper game, these characters were mainly present to serve the story. They weren't off and utilized in gameplay. Maybe you got to drive and race villains as Murray and you got to hack as Bentley, but there still wasn't a whole hell of a lot for these characters to do. And though it might have only seemed natural to make these characters interchangeable and playable once a sequel came about, I still never quite wished that Bentley and Murray were playable more often while experiencing Sly 1, if you know what I mean. But only one level in the Sly 2, I find myself realizing that these are two characters I never really knew I desired to play as, and am so happy that they are now playable characters. As is the issue with many other games, there was the chance that playing as all three of these characters might not have been as fun. You know, like with other games, there's oftentimes you can control multiple characters, but this character's mechanic sucks. and. This character gets you killed too easily. This character I prefer to use because he has superior moves to the other playable characters, but it wasn't like that at all. It was amazing to find that playing as Sly, Bentley, and Murray is equally satisfying for different reasons, which I take for granted sometimes, but recently thought back and realized that there aren't many games where I want to be stripped from playing as the main character to temporarily control a supporting character. I just don't usually enjoy that, and I usually don't find the supporting character as fun to control. This is one of the many reasons Sly Sly 2 is considered a masterpiece of the PlayStation 2. Sucker Punch reeled you in with amusing characters and then made being able to utilize all three an oddly equal and favorable experience that becomes addictive. Of course, there are some players who may have a preference as to who they enjoy playing as more. Each character has their strengths, and that's what makes it equal to interchange them throughout the game to utilize for different purposes. But I find when looking back and replaying Sly 2 and Sly 3 throughout the years, I have no preference as to which character I enjoy playing as more. All three of the characters are equally enjoyable and fun as fuck to control. In comparison to Jack and Daxter, or the PS2 iterations of Ratchet and Clank, I never got as much fun out of playing as Clank or Daxter because they always felt like an afterthought, a filler piece of gameplay to switch things up so the player wouldn't get bored, and the main issue is that both of those characters just don't have the same fleshed out gameplay as the protagonist. Daxter's gameplay feels way too underdeveloped, and Clank's gameplay, even though it's a nice break away from the action, can be a little bit too slow and there aren't enough interesting gameplay options at your disposal. Unlike the main playable character, they both feel very limited. This is far from an issue with Murray and Bentley, and what makes it even better is how they are physically capable of feats the other is not, but they each bring something just as useful to the table. Murray is the biggest and heaviest character to control. His fists are your melee attack, and it's the most powerful melee of the trio, so he's a beast when you drop him into an enemy arena. Whereas Bentley is the smallest and lightest character for a quiet approach to the combat. 
One is a straight up brawler, and the other relies on his stealth based weaponry. And the biggest takeaway is that they don't try to surpass each other, they're both equally as capable of making the gameplay more engaging in their own interesting ways when playing as Sly gets old. What I truly love the most about playing as Bentley and Murray is how their gameplay styles tie directly into their character arcs across the trilogy. In the first, Bentley and Murray aren't yet capable of performing on the field. Murray's getaway driving skills are top-notch, but he's a rather cowardly character who doesn't face the action head-on when he's on foot. Bentley has a bit more hands-on involvement due to him being the angel on Sly's shoulder to lead him in the right direction, but he's also never seen outside of his comfort zone. This drastically changes in Sly 2, when they both become officially playable characters. Murray's demeanor is hardened. He's still a lovable goofball, but he's confident he could throw hands and he thrust himself into the action. Bentley gradually warms up to being on the field. He becomes braver and more daring in the face of the most daunting situations, whereas before he would stay behind the scenes and employ his skills from a safe distance. This character development comes full circle in Sly 3. Murray heals himself from his emotional pain and becomes a wizened version of himself who still carries the same willingness and strength he added to, and Bentley overcomes a life-altering disability in the most magnificent fashion by making his wheelchair an extremely powerful tool for all intents and purposes. The evolution of these characters from game to game and how their gameplay changes to reflect it is honestly what makes them the best playable side characters of any video game.